warm welcome from my side as well. Thank you for having us here and uh, giving us the possibility to talk about coherent and the uh, laser technology. And um, how do I do this next? Okay, I want to uh, talk a little bit about the challenges we are facing with the e-mobility and uh, what the implication is to the laser technology. And I would uh, like to talk a little bit of the uh, fiber laser arm and the, um, bring a few slides of the applications that we are doing in our apps labs. So when we are shifting from the uh, internal combustion engine powertrain to the e-mobility powertrain or uh, uh, e-powertrain, we are losing a lot of components, but we are gaining a lot of components. Uh, these components, uh, as you can see here, um, have a quite uh, impact on the, the welding, the joining methods that we are seeing there. So, um, for instance, we are seeing uh, parts coming into the e-power train that increases uh, the welding extremely. Just think about um, the um, battery modules, battery packs, or think about the um, hairpin welding for the stators. So there's a lot more welding up, uh, all of a sudden that has to be done. Um, think about the welding length that is increasing, increasing in the e-power train. Uh, think about um, battery packs, battery trays, uh, cooling plates, very long weld seams all of a sudden. Um, and then uh, think about uh, the um, weld depths that is up, uh, starting to change from extremely thin material to very thick material. So here we also see uh, quite a big of variety coming for welding uh, applications. Just think about battery uh, cells with very fine thin metals. Uh, think about inverters with uh, deep copper welding. So here we see a much bigger variety all of a sudden for, for these joining methods to come. Um, also with the e-power train, uh, and this is very important also for the laser technology, is that we are all of a sudden facing more materials, a, a wider a range of materials that is not necessarily very good for, for welding applications. Uh, for instance, we see copper coming, we see aluminum alloys coming, uh, some aluminum alloys that are not meant for welding very good. Uh, but are, are uh, designed into the, uh, into the uh, components, of course, because the, there, are, there are various reasons there. Uh, we see uh, al aluminum, extruded aluminum, we see die-casted aluminum that is uh, now part of these uh, components. Um, then we see the similar material uh, combinations uh, that are coming up in a great deal. <clears throat> Stainless steel, of course, is increasing. Uh, um, um, high strength steel, of course. Here we have a lot, a huge variety all of a sudden that is coming with the, with the e-power train. Um, so, and then coming with these materials and with these increases and uh, modifications, there is a lot of other demands that are coming all of a sudden um, with these new components. For instance, all of a sudden we have to be gas tight. All of a sudden we have to um, pressurize these components after welding and we have to have a, a very tight seam. We, we will not allow spatters on the parts. Um, we have uh, material combinations that are very challenging, that are not really meant for, for uh, fast joining methods. Um, we have components, just think about um, battery cells that um, are t um, sensitive to heat. Um, all of a sudden, so you have to cope with these demands. So we have a, a, a variety of things that all of a sudden add to all these uh, other demands that we see. So for the typical laser technology that we are, that we are used to have in the automotive business, uh, the typical laser technology is not, not uh, that is welding usually all kinds of steel components and stuff like that, um, is not really meant for coping with all these uh, technologies. So when you can see here on the side, um, some of the things really cause some troubles and we have to do something to cope with these, uh, to be these uh, challenges. So um, 
there is a, some means that we can do to, to, uh, to, to meet these challenges, of course. Uh, we can increase the laser power, of course. That's, that's uh, a widely common thing that we see. Um, you increase the weld speed, of course. Um, we, we see a higher use of scanner optics. Uh, we see beam oscillation being used. So there's a, a, a high variety of things that, that you try to do to, in order to uh, get these things in a, in a better condition. We see uh, different uh, process strategies coming. We see, uh, we see that you have to understand the process, the, the welding process much better. Uh, to, to really uh, have a productive process. And uh, we see various waves lengths coming to, um, to, uh, to uh, cope with these uh, materials. Uh, today I want to talk about one of these uh, measures, and that's the beam shaping um, with the arm laser. Um, the beam shaping here, we see a um, ring-core combination. And um, yeah, I will show a little bit what we can do with this ring core combination to use this um, to meet these challenges. So, see if this works. So, when we see the, the ring and the core working together, um, we all of a sudden have some effects when they are working together. And these effects um, we can use for these challenging materials and challenging processes. And how this is working, I will give you a little bit an overview. Um, first of all, for the principal understanding, the adjustable ring mode or arm laser that we are um, having in our laser technology uh, comes with a coaxial fiber uh, that delivers two beams, a ring beam and a center beam, coming with the same, with the same process fiber in principle. And the special feature of the arm laser is that you can completely individual uh, control the power of the core and the ring, or the center and the ring. And um, yeah, the combination of the center and the ring, um, this is the theory that we see over here. When we are, when we are going in this direction for the, for the welding onto the material, with the, with the spot onto the material, we see the trailing edge, the zone one, which is how it is uh, shown here. The zone one is, the, is the, the, the leading edge that is preheating the material when we are welding. Uh, the center is, the, is the, um, forming the keyhole, the zone number two, which is the typical keyhole welding. And the zone, zone number three is keeping the keyhole open much longer and is uh, stabilizing the melt pool as it uh, still heats up the welding seam. So this is, this is the theory to it, and uh, what we can do with it, I will show in the, in the various applications. Most important to understand is that we are delivering um, a variety of different fibers with the arm laser, and you ha can have this with a, as a spliced version, a direct coupled uh, version, and then we can have uh, different diameters. For instance, uh, what's uh, very new is the, we call it single mode arm. Uh, this is the first in the row um, with, a, with a very, um, with a single mode in the, in the center, 25 micrometers, uh, and 170 in the outer diameter of the, of the ring. And um, yeah, there's a, a huge variety. We have a new variety, which is the 5200 that you can see over there that is uh, marked new. The 5200 we see uh, now on the market uh, with a high demand in e-mobility applications. Uh, the advantage here is that we have a, a, yeah, a, very, uh, a very good uh, combination with 5200, but we can combine this with a fiber-fiber coupler or a fiber-fiber switch in comparison to the single mode arm that is a spliced version. So, um, and then uh, last but not least, the uh, 100-290 uh, is also seen very often in automotive and e-mobility applications as this, uh, yeah, as this provides a, a bigger spot and also comes with fiber-fiber coupler or fiber-fiber switch. Okay. <clears throat> so, um, to show a little bit the uh, possibility and the working together of the core and the ring. 
when we are here on the left hand side, uh, can you see that? Yeah. When you see this on the left hand side, when we have the, the, the center welding only, we have a very turbulent um, welding seam on the copper. We are welding copper here. And we have made some, some x rays lately. You can see, I hope this is, I hope you can see this. You can see a very narrow keyhole and a very turbulent welding. And you can see a lot of, of uh, pores being formed because you have a breaking uh, or a, a gapping, closing the gap of the keyhole. And that is, that is causing um, these, uh, these pores to be formed. So uh, with a normal center power, it's, um, you can go fast, but you, you have the possibility that you have an, a turbulent welding and an uneven welding, and you might create pores. So when we have a core ring combination, or the center ring combination, we see the welding is much more um, yeah, relaxed, much more uh, stable, and um, no, we see almost no spatters here. And when we look at the, at the X-ray down here, we see a much bigger open keyhole, and uh, there's almost no pores being formed, and we have a, a very, yeah, a very uh, relaxed welding combination. If we do the other extreme and only weld with the ring alone, we see again um, that, the, that the welding is very turbulent, and we, you see here now uh, spatters coming, the uh, keyhole and the X-ray is uh, not as deep. It's more open, but you can see here, yeah, it's uh, very turbulent and you, you will create better. So the correct combination of the power between the core and the ring is essential here. This is something we have to figure out um, exactly for your application and exactly what this is what we are doing in our apps labs to help you together with our technology to bring together um, the right yeah, parameters uh, in this regard to have the best, uh, the best results for you, for you as a customer. Um, one of the features of the, of the arm laser is that, I mentioned this earlier, we can completely independently control the core and the ring, or the center and the ring from each other. This has some advantages, so we can use these effects uh, in, in a certain way. For instance, when we are welding copper, what we can do is we are heating up the, uh, the material, the copper material, and then we are ramping up the, the center. So when the copper material is heated up with the ring first, we increase the absorption for infrared laser, and then we can bring in the full power with the center and then weld it. Uh, as you can see here on the right hand side on the, on the graph here, that is the, the ramping of the two independent power uh, of, of the beam. One time the ring, so we start with the ring, that's the blue line, and then we kick in the center once the material is heated up. That of course is, uh, is uh, this is a slow motion here that of course works much, much faster. And you can see that we can have a, this is a controlled weld spot, it doesn't spatter, but we can, uh, we can definitely heat up the, the copper to have a very good absorption here. Yeah, this effect um, helps us with a very good starting and stopping of a weld seam. So we, we can reproduce this process every time um, with this uh, ramping up and down, individual ramping up and down. As you can see here, the starting point, the end point, is always the same. Um, there's no, no difference there. And also, we, what we can do for the starting point of the weld seam um, with the uh, powering up the ring first and then powering the, the center, we can do it the other way around when we stop, uh, when we stop the weld seam and uh, we avoid a pore or a crater at the end of the weld seam. Also, we are very in, in, uh, sensitive to different um, yeah, surfaces. We have sanded here one of the sides, and the other side is polished. So um, nevertheless, it, with different speeds, we see this is uh, yeah, insensitive to any of the surface uh, variations here.
It's also a feature, of course, of the ring and uh, ring shape is that we can weld in all kinds of direction, unidirectional. It doesn't matter. The effect is always the same, even if we are doing different shapes or if we are oscillating. Um, the, the effect is always the same um, as it works. Um, you can see a very homogeneous weld seam here with the copper on the, in the middle. Uh, uh, here uh, you can see a very even um, distribution of the weld seam of the material. Um, we can control the, the weld width with the ring pretty good and the weld depth with the center power. So there are some more examples of that coming up, but um, not only deep copper welding is possible with this configuration, but we can also do uh, thin copper welding, keyhole welding. This is, a, this is a sheet here that is uh, one mil thick, and we are welding half the sheet thickness here. You can see uh, very smooth uh, welding with almost no spatters on the, on the copper material. But what's most important is that uh, in the lower picture you can see the evenness of the weld penetration, how even it is, it controls only half a mil penetration depth with the keyhole welding. And again, over here in the other picture, you can see the, the formation of the widths and the, and the depths with the core ring combination, so we can influence uh, this, this very, very easily. Also, from thin material, we can go to the thick material. Uh, very important for some um, the power electronics uh, that we see, and we are, we are selling the high power arm laser into this area where we, where we get these uh, very thick copper that we have to weld. Uh, electrical conductivity is uh, something that is really important here. And you can see that we are welding up to um, uh, six, seven, eight millimeters with high speed. Uh, that's possible. Okay. <laughs> um, so, yeah, from thin material to thick material, that's, that's all possible here. Yeah, something else is uh, welding of the, of the aluminum. We see here that is um, a prismatic uh, weld can. Um, here we have some extremely um, high uh, uh, demands on s welding without spatter, being gas tight and proof and, uh, and uh, having a very controlled weld depth. So we cannot weld too deep, otherwise we will uh, uh, cause damage to the, to the material inside and we have to uh, have um, uh, yeah, a fast, fast enough welding for this. So here you can see the evenness, also in the lower picture you can see the weld depth, how controlled it is which is very important that we uh, tight seal this, uh, this can, but don't damage the inside of the battery cell. Here we have some pictures. Uh, sorry about that. Start again. Here we go. This is uh, some of the weldings that we do to the battery can. So you see a very controlled and uh, very even welding that we have even around the corners. So very important to have no spatters here and have a gas tight welding. Yeah, another example for aluminum welding is bus bar welding for uh, battery modules. As you can see here, the uh, requirement is to weld very, very fast because we don't want to harm, again, the uh, material inside and the isolators that we have there. So. Um, here the task was not to go over 90 degrees. With the fast welding, um, we, we reached about 70, 80 degrees here in this, uh, in this uh, example. You can see here the welding. Um, one more slide and then I stop. <laughs> um, this similar material, uh, we have uh, aluminum on the top and we have copper underneath. And uh, we, um, with, a, with a wrong distribution that we see here, we don't get a real good um, yeah, joining of the material. You can see here that this is not very even. The material is not, uh, is not mixing very well. Um, aluminum is, uh, has a lower welding uh, point, uh, uh, melting point than copper does, but if we have the right distribution between aluminum and copper, then we will get a very 
good mixing of the material, as you can see here. In the lower picture, you can only see the aluminum because the X-ray has to adopt to the material which is uh, visible here. But here you can see a very good mixture. Okay, then my last slide, <laughs> time is up. Uh, hairpin welding, we see, um, what we see right now is the welding speed is going uh, down because the volume is going up, so the demands are very, very fast welding. We can contribute to this with the arm laser, uh, where, we, where we influence the weld time with the, with the laser power, but to the weld time or the, to the complete process time, there are more and more things contributing, so there's a variety of, of heads on the market. The software is important, um, the, the image capturing, the detection is important, so there's a combination of different things. We see welding speeds that are below 100 milliseconds, um, far below 100 milliseconds, so the arm laser can contribute here. You as a customer have the choice to combine this with the right um, optic heads combination here. Okay, um, please come to our table over there in the other, in the other area. We will, we will happy to discuss this with you or show you more of these uh, slides and films, of course, and thanks you, thank you for having me here. Uh, happy to discuss further things with you, and thank you for having the chance to show this uh, here in this event. And thank you. <laughs>